Welcome to another video tutorial on regression. This one we're going to be looking at the ANOVA test under multiple linear regression. And here's our hypothesis that we're interested in. We're interested in the regression coefficients, beta 1, beta 2, dot, 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 all the way up to beta k. So all of them equal to zero, or at least one of these is not equal to zero. So what is this testing? Uh, this is we're in multiple linear regression. What do we mean by all of them equal to zero? Well, it means do any of the xj's that we have, any of the predictors we have, have an influence on y? We want to know. This is like an overall test. Does is there anything in there worth finding? So that's basically our question here. And so this is what's called an analysis of variance test and we'll talk about why it's analysis of variance here in a second but this is the name of it and you'll often hear it as ANOVA but you want to know of the predictors that I have for why do any of them have an influence on why okay so we're going to use these ideas that we did in the last video on R squared so we have the sum of squares regression sum of squares total and sum of squares error yeah, and these add up, by the way. The sum of squares regression plus the sum of squares error ends up being the sum of squares total. There's a whole lot of mathematics behind that that I'm going to skip at this point. All right, so what we're going to do to test this is first get an average variance that the regression is explaining. And we're going to get an average variance that's unexplained. And don't worry about where this k came from and the n minus k minus 1 at this point. It's not worth worrying about. These are just the formulas that SPSS is going to use and any of your favorite software would use. So these are the uh, pieces that we're going to be interested in. This is the mean squared regression and this is the mean squared error. So it's a an average amount of variation. Okay, so uh, they're pretty easy to work with. And notice I wrote mean squared error, they're averages. So what are we looking at in pictures? So the blue bars here are the amount of variation explained by using the regression. Okay, so, and the red bars here are the amount of variation that is unexplained by the regression. So we have the variation explained and the variation unexplained. And remember, the formulas have squares in them, so everything's going to be a squared distance here that when we talk about the average distance or uh, variance, it's going to be in squared units. All right, so how are we going to test this? We're going to test this with a, what's called an F statistic. So F is the mean square regression over the mean squared error. So this is how much of the variation can be explained by the regression, how much cannot. It's pretty easy to think about. It's actually a signal to noise ratio. Uh, you can think of it this way as well. So the mean square regression is how much signal is there in the data over how much noise is there in the data. Noise is what you can't explain. Signal is what you can explain. So remember it's made of square pieces, so F is always greater than zero. Uh, F near one means you have equal signal as noise, so probably not a very strong pattern in that case. If it's less than one, then the noise is greater than the signal, which means that there's not a very strong signal, which means the regression doesn't do that good of a job. Uh, if F is much greater than 1, then the noise is much greater than the signal, and this is where we're interested. This is the case where if it's much larger than 1, then we know that it would be statistically significant. Something is in there worth finding. Okay, so I usually just pay attention a lot to the F because the F gives me how much signal I have relative to the noise, and that's uh, useful information to have. So. Well, remember, we're going to be calculating this off of multiple data sets. So we want to come up with a distribution for F so we know how big is too big. How much is bigger, right? This F greater than, much greater than uh, 1 is big enough. Is 5 big enough? Is 10 big enough? Is 2 big enough? We don't know. So we want to come up with a distribution. So suppose six people form the same experiment. They're going to get different data sets and they're going to get different F values. And we want to look at the sampling distribution of the different F values when 
there's no relationship in the data. Okay, so if 10,000 people were to perform this experiment and calculate their F when no relationship exists in the data, this is our null hypothesis. Okay, we would get an F distribution, and this is a histogram of those 10,000 uh, experiments done, and each person calculated an F, and you can see that it goes from zero all the way out to beyond 30. Uh, and this is for uh, a simple linear regression, but it's the same idea. Uh, the F distribution would look like this, this blue line on here. This is the actual probability distribution associated with it. I'm not going to talk about how to come up with it. There are other videos on how to do that. All right, so this is the general shape of an F distribution. It's always going to have a mean or a peak around 1. Okay, because under the null hypothesis, which is there's no pattern, we would expect that just by random chance you would have some pattern in there that's equal to the amount of error. Uh, but notice that large values here are just very unlikely. They're quite rare to occur. Okay, so for completeness, we're going to say that F, our test statistic, is the mean squared regression over the mean squared error, and that's going to follow an F distribution that has two degrees of freedom, a numerator degrees of freedom and a denominator degrees of freedom. And in the case of regression, the DF1, the degrees of freedom 1, or the numerator degrees of freedom, is equal to the number of predictors in the model, and DF2 is N minus K minus 1. And we're not going to worry about how to come up with those right now. We're just going to use them as we have them. But SPSS provides us with this information. And we're going to go back to the coffee.csv data set. And we are going to just generate the ANOVA for that. And I will jump over there. But if you haven't downloaded the coffee.csv data set, it's linked in the description below. And you should be able to grab it and be able to use it for, uh, to, to replicate what we're doing here. Okay, so let's go over to SPSS. Okay, so I've imported the coffee.csv data set. If you haven't figured out how to import data yet, go back and look at a previous video where we actually import data and we look at it. This is going to be the same analysis that we've done in the last couple videos, uh, just for repetition so you see how it works. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go up to Analyze. We're going to come down to Regression. Once we see Regression, we're going to go to Linear. If I can hit it, like usual, in the several videos, I missed it as well. Hit linear. Uh, I've already put in here anxiety and coffee. So if you haven't ever did this before, you can remove it. But our dependent variable is anxiety. Our depend or independent variable is coffee. And I'm not going to do anything else but add these two and hit OK. And up pops our table here. This is our ANOVA table. And I'm going to jump back over to the slides so we can zoom in on this and talk about it. Okay, so here's the output from SBSS blown up a little bit bigger. And in here, you can see the sums of squares regression. That is SSR. It's calculated it for us. There's SS residual here, or the sum of squares residual, which is the sum of squares error, or SSE. You can see it's 5.499. Uh, our degrees of freedom in the case of the coffee is one because we only have one predictor in there, which happened to be coffee, the amount of coffee per week. And you can see that we had an overall 51 observations, so 51 minus one minus one is equal to 49. And to get to the mean square, remember you would take your sum of squares regression and divide it by the degrees of freedom. Well, it's one in this case, so that's easy. Here we would take 5.499, which is our sum of squares error. We're going to divide it by its degrees of freedom and come up with 0.112. So all of these pieces uh, add up, or I mean, you can do the math on. You can see 49 plus 1 is 50. If you add these two together, you'll get the sums of squares total. And if we take our 73.948, which is our mean squared regression, and divide it by our mean squared error of 0.112, we will get 658.968. Now, remember, the F distribution is centered around 1. This is ridiculously bigger than 1, so we shouldn't be surprised that we get a significance level of less than 0.001. Okay, so this gives us the ability to test our hypothesis with this p-value, and what we would say is that 
based on this, we are pretty sure that there is some variable in the model that is useful. And there, in this case, there's only one variable in the model, which is coffee. So coffee is useful statistically significantly related to y, okay, uh, through the linear regression. Okay, so we're going to look at more about multiple linear regression uh, in the next video, and ANOVA applies there as well, so just keep that in mind. We're going to be using these ideas interchangeably between simple linear regression and multiple linear regression to hopefully help you understand the ideas. So I will see you there.